All right, welcome to that Sin Show. We got some big news today, and I think uh, I might be the first one to break it. So here we go. Let's get right into it. We're going to be checking out Moog sold. They sold Moog. Moog is no more. Moog, Moog, whatever you want to call it, it don't matter anymore because now they're sold. I don't know whether to cry or to celebrate because we're all we're all looking to get a piece of Moog, and, and not many of us can afford it. So without further ado, let's get into it. That Sin Show. All right, so here we go. Uh, in Music acquires Moog Music and promises groundbreaking new instruments. So, I don't know. Is this what we've all been waiting for, finally? The company that doesn't release anything but clones of itself? Minus a couple, like Subharmonicon, DFAM, they did good with that stuff. But, I mean, nothing new. They haven't released anything new, but... This looks to be something super exciting. So let's dig right into it real quick and see what they're saying. iMusic acquires, uh, this is the parent company of Akai Pro, Alessis, and Air Music Tech. They got Muga, and they're promising groundbreaking instruments. So let's see here. All right, so we got se Sequential and Oberheim acquired by Focusrite. That's one big merger. And now I guess in order to compete, you can't just make your stuff in America anymore. And you can't make your stuff in America anymore while not being able to let regular most regular Americans buy your gear. And uh, I don't know, man, people coming up who just want to get in the game, you can't just go out and buy a $5,000 synthesizer. So I get it. But you know what? Everyone out there who loves Moog and says, uh, Moog, who says, uh, you know... <laughs> Man, just save up your money or, you know, it's made in America. It's the top quality. Yeah, it might be the top quality or I'm only buying it because it's made in America. Well, guess what? I'm sure you buy other stuff that's not made in America. So Moog's going to have to get on board. COVID probably killed them. They don't release any products. Although their products are amazing, they don't release them. So they put out nothing new. That's why Behringer blows them away. And now it's going to become... Uh, Moog Erringer, you know, they're going to be bringing out Chinese products that we can afford. Maybe they'll do what Roland's doing and take take kind of the approach where they they just digitize a lot of their stuff and let the poor man get it. Let a poor man have a piece of Moog, baby. Let the poor man get a piece. So fine, release your $5,000 to $10,000 to $20,000 pieces of artwork, you know, that's cool. But also... Put it out in like a, a digital format and, and throw it out there for cheaper and let the poor man get a piece and make some music, you know? So. So let's look. What, what are they saying here? Uh, so the plan in music CEO Jack O'Donnell is where he wants to take Moog music. So it's a big step. Previously owned by employees, not no more. And. I mean, have you guys heard the rumor? I'm going to show you in a minute. Maybe they had an uprising at Moog because about a year ago they had they were trying to unionize because you had, you know what? Better than that, let me just show you. But first, before we get into that, let's check out what the executive said real quick. Here she is, Michelle Moog Kusa. You may have heard today's announcement that Moog Music has been sold to In Music. While this is undoubtedly big news in the music products industry, it also has a deep personal meaning for me, as it represents a new chapter for the iconic storied company that my father, Dr. Robert Moog, founded in 1954 boy, as R.A. Moog. R.A. Moog underwent several name changes and was purchased by other owners over the years. I take comfort in knowing that the Moog Music trademark was returned to my father three years before his passing in 2005. My father's invention of the Moog synthesizer revolutionized nearly every genre of music. The impact of his 50 year career changed forever the way we listen to, create and experience music. In light of today's news, I'd like to share a few thoughts with you. First, I want to take this opportunity to remind everyone that while Moog Music and the Bob Moog Foundation share a common lineage with my father, the Bob Moog Foundation is and will remain 
and independent 501c3 nonprofit. Oh, you want that tax break, baby? It's okay. We are not okay. nor are we funded by Mode Music. The funding that empowers our work comes from supporters like you. Second, I would like to thank Mode Music's employees. All right, so thank the employees. I think we get the idea. Whoever is involved in uh, this company just wants the cash. So they needed some money or wanted some money. They sold it to a huge conglomerate, which could be good, could be bad. I'm sure it will go, uh, you know, when Sequential got sold, they came up with the Take 5. They just came up with the Trigon, which, with Trigon 6, which was like, you know, an idea they had. But they wouldn't let some of their employees come out with the... Uh, with the, uh, was the pulse, the pulse wave one they were working on, the wave, third wave, or whatever it's called. I can't even remember what it's called now, but a bunch of employees were working on that one, the third wave, the big blue box. And, uh, you know, Dave Smith was like, nah, not into it, but you guys go put it out. So that's fine. So anyways, we're not going to listen too much to her, but you get it. They sold the company. Foundation is going to keep going. They want a tax break. So that's fine and dandy. But let's check this out. This is what's interesting. This is at the... Turns out, famous synthesizer company is owned, 49% owned, average workers making equipment that cost thousands of dollars and handy, complicated technical sports even paid for, and they're, you know, I don't know how much they're getting paid, but they don't seem very happy. Let's have a look. People relate to that. Hey, um, how's everybody doing? Woo! Yeah. Thank you for the show. Thank you. This is great. Uh, I love seeing all this. How much people just making the instrument? How about, uh, sorry. My name is Christopher McGlashan. Oh, I'm an yeah. uh, for the IBW Local 238 here in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, been a union member for 22 years. I'm an inside journal wireman. Yes. I'm also an instructor at our apprenticeship. I run our apprenticeship. Oh, um, and this is great. See the solidarity. See everybody here. Um, being a union member, it, it, it means, uh, good. Uh, you know, having a contract, having a voice having a, a right to negotiate what you want. You know, that's what this is all about. Uh, the IBW Local 238 right now, we have 240 members, and I can guarantee you, every one of them are right here with you guys, they're behind you, all of you. You know, we wanna we want to see this uh, campaign be successful. All right, cool. Support. My title is Technical Support Assistant. I've uh, been with Moog for nine years. Uh, Thank you. Dedication. Uh, I still uh, make less than a living wage. Wow. Um, so we got people here that build thousands of cents. If you call this place, if you email this place, chances are you're talking to me or one of a few other people. We're doing technical support. We're so, you know, you got the employees wanting to unionize, you got Moog trying to sell their equipment for $10,000, make it in America, but these guys, you know, they're not happy. Let's check them out a little more. Helping you repair your synth, we're saving you money from having to send the synth to us, we're selling you parts, we're helping you integrate it into Ableton or Logic or your setup at home in your studio. We're Jack of all, all trades, of by the look of it. Um, five days a week and still not many of us making a living wage, especially after all this time. So just wanted to give that little bit of context from my own personal experience. And um... what do we always say, son? Liberty Mutual customizes. All right. So, you know, it seems to me that there was something going on with the employees. They weren't too happy. Like this guy saying, he's not making a living wage and they're selling synthesizers for five, six, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000. It's kind of hard to be happy about that, you know? Um, but... Let's just see what else he's got to say. A good start. I think let's just keep the conversation and the momentum going. Um, What's up? Hey. Hey. My name's Jack. I'm a production validator. I, I effectively make sure the instrument works the way it's supposed to. I make sure all the jacks function correctly. All the boy. Correctly, all that good shit. And um, I, I just wanted to talk about my experience here at Moog. Let's I've hear been it. here for two years. Uh, I actually started on the same day as Aubrey spoke earlier. Um, there are a couple of us who started that day and left. Just one of them. And so I usually work on the Matriarch instrument. And it's it great probably, instrument. Since we're out of Should have had presets. <laughs> so we. We built an instrument called the Matriarch, if y'all aren't aware. It sells currently for $2,200 new. 
that is equivalent to my monthly take home pay, if not more. I all right, so anyway, you get it. These guys are freaking out. He says he makes about two grand a month working in Moog. It's supposed to be this iconic company that, you know, is, you know, rainbows and buttercups. But, you know, you got to be able to fill the cup, too, to take a sip. And this cat cannot get to play the Moog because he can't afford it. But he needs to open a synth bank. But anyways, you get the idea. These cats weren't happy. So then today you hear that Moog is now sold. All right? Boom sold iMusic so we'll see what happens um it's not all bad though like I said I love Moog I think it's amazing I might try to pick up the uh, matriarch uh dark edition for like a thousand bucks if I can and but it should have presets or something you can save you know so that's Moog but all things considered let's finish out the day with one of these really cool things that I thought was from Moog was uh Lisa Belladonna using the subharmonicon the D fam, uh, the uh, the mother thirty two, the matriarch. The, just check it out. Hit that ten minute mark. We're gonna do this for a minute and a half, and then we're out. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? Is Moog going to turn into Behringer? Can they compete? You tell me. We love Moog, don't we? We love it. it just sounds so good and sweet. That's it. That's that synth show. You know, that is where we're at. Moog is sold. What are we going to do? We're going to celebrate. We're going to cry. We'll probably do a little of both. But one thing that happens, no one likes change. And when change happens, a lot of beautiful things come from it. So let's see if we can get some Moog synths in a poor man's hands for me and you. Synth Samurai, that's synth show. Thank you. <laughs>